Jay, Jimmy Jay! On me! Run in, begin! GSF Week 15 Game of the Week. Number one, Sarah, taking on number two, Valley Christian. CCS Division One, top eight teams in the section, down to two. We are getting the ball first, and we're going into the wind. Okay, it's going to get windy and wet. Okay, we're prepared for that sort of stuff. We're naming seals out there tonight. You got me? Okay, here's the deal. It's crucial that we get first downs and move the football down the field. We're probably going to have the win in the second and the fourth quarter when we want. Okay? So you got to weather the storm, literally and figuratively, in the first quarter. Okay, it's very, very important that we get started fast. It was a windy, kind of rainy day, so we knew we were anticipating a, a run-heavy day. Going into that CCS game, we were confident. We were ready for them. Look to the man to the left and the man to the right. Look right at Chingando Eye. We exist for that person next to you. This program exists for the brotherhood. The relationships that we create in this program will last a lifetime. You guys remember this night for the rest of your lives. All I ask, all I ask is that you guys give max effort every single play, and you'll have no regrets. Max effort every play. You understand? Yes, coach. You understand? Yes, coach. Get off that ball. Get ready to roll. Father Joe, take us away. Let's go. Five million dollars present. Chaplain, it is your time. Our Father. Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we give those who trespass against us. In the least of temptation, deliver us from evil. Amen. Send you to go sound. Right across. I'll never forget on that night, basically in awe. They kick the ball, they take the wind, we lose the toss, they take the wind, they defer, take the wind, which they should. We had an 80 yard drive into a 40 mile an hour wind. We were confident and you know, everybody talks about Valley's line. And so we went in there from the first drive and we pounded the rock and we ran that ball and uh, it got to like fourth and goal maybe. And we ran the field goal fake uh, to Jackson. Here's the snap and it's a fake. Little shovel pass to Jackson Montaimua, first down. Sarah with the trickery. And we ended up picking it up, and then once we scored right there, I just knew that we had it. Lampkin keeps it himself, pushes forward for the touchdown, and Sarah strikes first. Good snap, good hold, kick on the way, and it is good. A 33-yard field goal by Damon Lewis. We're hungry. We're ready to go. We have a, some of the best secondary, Nate and Jackson behind me, and I have Nusi, Marcellus, Jerry, and Seal in front of me. We tore out everything they ran, so we were ready, we were ready for Valley Christian to come with new plays. We were ready for them to come out with us at different angles like Mitty did, with trick plays, and. They didn't. Sarah's defense dominated the first half. They're 24 minutes away from another championship. Okay, team. Hey, guys, listen. Hey, hey I'm going to have some time for some new rounds of You got me? Come in here, fire you guys up. You all that bullshit. on time for that right now. We don't have time. So keep your eyes right, play your asses off, play with one another, all the we've been talking about, right? That's all we need to do. Believe in each other, man. This is the time you believe in each other. 24 more minutes of Padre football. You guys are built to win the third. You're built to finish games off in the fourth, right? Let's just do that. Please. So going into the into the second Valley Christian Sarah game, a game that was uh, much anticipated after Sarah beat Valley Christian on his home field 10 to nothing. You know, Valley Christian has never really had great success at Sarah and uh, getting Sarah at Independence High for the CCS championship game, the hope at Valley Christian was that it would be a little bit of a different story in the CCS championship game. But on that night, under windy, windy conditions, uh, Sarah put together a Half Moon Bay type drive to open the game. Where we were completing passes, running the football. I believe it was 17 or 18 plays went the length of the field, 
and scored to set the tone. Like everything led to a seven nothing kind of scenario, which was, I think, one of the best drives of the season. Unbelievable drive, never forget it. That was really all the scoring they needed because for the second time in a matter of a few weeks, the Serra Padre defense was lights out and shut out Valley Christian to win the CCS championship and, and advance to a Northern California regional game the following week, which turned out to be against San Joaquin Memorial. I think that that, that scenario, us winning, happens 10 times out of 10. I just think we were the better team than them. We went up there and we stopped plays. We tore plays out of their playbook. We ate them up in the backfield. Man, couldn't ask for anything better. If we play them later on, shut them out again, that's two times in one year. You usually don't see that at all. Terrence, or, or if it, it should be Terrence, when Terrence sees that short split by 13, he makes a drag and he can make the call. Just another quick shout out to the defense. I mean, Valley played Valley Christian twice this year, zero points in both games, completely dominant. I mean, I never felt once that Valley was, gonna, was a threat to the defense. I mean, they were just on point from top to bottom, from the line, to the backers, to the secondary. They were moving on all cylinders and no one was doing anything against them at that point in the year. Do not get beat outside, you understand me? We have to get everyone off. Go Max, go Max. Go Max. First and ten, pass over the middle, intercepted. Andrew Stewart with the pick. The third turnover forced by the Padre defense. I mean, we've been working for it all year. Uh, you know, it starts with Sunday in January. It was, it was not in August, it wasn't in June. It was all the way in January. We became a family. We bonded all together, and that's what it comes down to. Finish this 12 more minutes. 12 more minutes. This is what love's all about. This is what love's all about. This is what this program's all about. It's about love. Finish this off with love in your heart and finish these guys forever. Let's go. We talked about being a tough organization and toughness comes in many forms. I say it every week and tonight was about ridiculous conditions, wind, rain. Uh, we were been practicing in the rain like on Thanksgiving and the day before it was like pouring. So I don't know, it wasn't really it didn't really affect us at all. Well, we just had to do our job. We had this mentality the whole week that we're Marines. So no matter what the condition is, we just got to do our job. But we came in with that same mentality. It's it's do or die right now. And we did it. So uh, you know, it's, it's right, a lot of good stuff, man. Second and six. Here comes Jerry Gatteotti busting through for the sack and the fumble, and another turnover forced by the Sarah defense. Being tough is physical and mental. Tonight was a culmination of being a tough organization. I thought the coaching staff was organized. Our organization was off the charts, and then furthermore, just the toughness, the mental toughness. Now, we all did good, especially the D line, secondary. Uh, Shout out to uh, Coach Eagle for helping me do everything. Thank you. Taylor back to pass. Looks right. Throws. Intercepted. Lantai Mua. He's taken it down toward the goal line and stopped at the one yard line. Fifth turnover for Sarah's defense. Last year we got a taste of what uh, they could really do. So uh, we remember that feeling of going home crying. We came back ready to uh, just fight. We knew it was going to be a tough game, but. Yeah, they better know who we are too, bro. Lampkin takes the snap, pushes into the end zone. Touchdown Padres. Valley Christian had six total turnovers. You can't win a championship that way. Sarah with their third CCS title in four years. We're proving everyone wrong. This has been our motto since day one. Uh, never satisfied. And that just drives us, you know. The fact that people don't believe in us is makes us, fills us to do our best and just, we're all we need. We don't care what anyone else says, we're all we need and a whole lot of love. The defense with two shutout wins against the Warriors and the game of the week playmaker, Jerry Gateote, an absolute pest on defense. Two forced fumbles and a handful of tackles. The game of the week MVP, Jackson Lataimua, the Washington State commit, was instrumental on the offensive side. Got the first down for the Padres in crucial situations. He also took the game away from Valley Christian with an interception with a little over two minutes left in the game. 
That led to the final touchdown. I think that night Jackson, you know, became just kind of that, that physical and spiritual force on both sides of the ball. Well, when I think of Jackson Latimu, I think of one word, and that's love. His love and his passion is off the charts. And sometimes it gets him in trouble. <laughs> he's an amazing human being. You can just see that love when he has the football and when he's tackling and when he's running around the field. And, you know, I know his brother, I know his mom, and, you know, I know he played for his dad, you know, who sadly passed away. So, you know, I know uh, Pops is shining down, looking down, and is proud of his son tonight. I'll never forget some of the runs he had at the end of the game to ice the game. It was just like, give me the ball. You can't stop this. You know, this is our championship. Obviously, the major story of the game was the, the takeaways versus turnovers, where I believe we had zero turnovers, which is a total testament to Dom. You know, zero turnovers in inclement weather. I mean, crazy, crazy, insane wind. I was thinking, going hard, and just keep doing what I do. Take it up. Just the way we practice. Uh, we come and practice every day, ready to work. On um, the way we do team, like we always run to the ball, ship the ball, and that's that's what we did today. And then the defense just leading the charge on, on takeaways. I think we had five or six that night. It was like we were plus six. The only other open division banner that stood the way it was was 2013, which is the first one we ever won. And every other year there's been kind of different styles of open, but this was like the best eight teams in the section playing again. We the best defense in this Those are really, really, really difficult to come by. So where SI earned that banner that day, you know, for their school, we, we needed to lose that kind of concept to hang another banner, banner number two in our gym, to win the CCS Open Division. And Jackson led the charge, I thought, that night big time. My time ruined. My time ruined the fumble. When you're playing in the best of the best division, and this year with the, there, make no mistake, this year was the, the first time it was won through eight in the CCS. The eight best teams in the CCS were in this division, and Sarah got it done, beating Half Moon Bay and, and Wilcox on his home field, and then going down to San Jose to play at Independence High against Valley Christian and uh, winning a winner-take-all game because the loser of that game knew its season was going to be over. No more, no more runners-up moving on. Yeah! Yeah! Yesterday we talked about being Navy SEALs, right? We talked about how tough and how great of a team they are. And I had this was given me by a Navy SEAL sitting right here in my pocket. It's a coin, it's a seal. Okay, this is what these guys carry around with them when they're, when they're at war with one another. Tonight you guys acted brave. You acted with love, brotherhood, and humility, just like the SEALs always do. And like what Father Joe said yesterday, when they line up the, the Navy SEALs to ask who gets the credit, at the end of the day, we all pulled the trigger, baby. Every one of you lent something to this uh, program. All the coaches, all the parents, everyone in here had great love and brotherhood and humility. All the alumni here, this is one for the ages. Amazing victory. I'm so proud to be a Padre. God bless all of you. Father Joe, take us out. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, our earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, and let us give those trespasses against us. May there be not temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thank you, Nebula, sir. CIF Football State Championships. Breaking news, three-star QB Dalen McLemore is suited up for the Serra Padres. McLemore broke his left non-throwing collarbone on October 26th against Sacred Heart Cathedral and was projected to miss the remainder of the season. But here he is now, ready to play his final high school game. It's still a question mark whether or not he'll start for the Padres. Coach Walsh told our producer earlier on, after the team got off the bus, that it'll be a game time decision. Oh man, let's go, let's go, oh man. At that moment, at that time, just looking at Dalen and you know feeling his collarbone, and Dr. Diefendorf saying, "Hey, this, it's it's over. He's got a pretty good broken collarbone here." Like I, I felt pain. I just felt sad. He was balling at the beginning of the year, and that happened. But in the day when it happened, you know, uh, it's always a uh, second man up. As time wore away, I knew that in those seven and a half games, 
he had done enough for himself, knowing that our job is to help these kids grow and mature and ultimately play in college if they'd like to. He had done enough himself to put it on tape to where I knew like an Arizona State wouldn't be like, ah, oh, nah, you know, he didn't play the last four games, like whatever. So I, I felt peace there. I was bummed because it's hard because I love Dalen and it sucks that that was our last time ever playing together. But I just got to take all that emotion out and just get that connection with Dom now, you know, next man up. It was a, one of those things where, you know, why now? You know, we're, we're living a dream. We've had challenging moments, but this is the first true painful challenge that this team had to face. Dominic Lampkin, the sophomore quarterback, starting for the first time. Lampkin took over and rushed for 92 yards on six carries with two rushing touchdowns. He was so young and so raw that he didn't really understand what was going on. But he had just that, that confidence to be able to go out there and perform when he wasn't, he didn't have the experience or the maturity that most quarterbacks do at a varsity level. Check it out, we gonna get straight to some interviews. First, I need my man. Dom, come up here, seven. Where's Dom at? Well, Dom's a character, I mean, he's special. He's got a lot of talent, and uh, he's definitely gonna have a bright future. Can you tell the kids what it is to be ready to fill your position at the quarterback position? Hey, watch a lot of film, pay attention at practice, and just keep balling out. Absolutely, it's very simple, very simple. I knew that when his uh, chance came, he was gonna be ready for it. Now you're a sophomore, man. Can you tell the kids what it's like to come up this early to play at the varsity level? Man, it's the best thing, best opportunity ever. Ball is ball, and we have to ball out. And we ran the ball a lot with him there, but we trusted him. And then when he needed to make those big time throws, he made them big time throws. He didn't get very many reps in practice, so uh, it'd be me getting the reps and then kind of having to explain it to him after because he wasn't able to get that full experience in practice. And he stepped up big time. He stepped up in a big way for all of this team. We know we have to leap based off what he does, and he's picked up a really big role. <laughs> I had to kind of sit back a little bit more, like coach more, I guess. Definitely helped me in the long run because if you have to explain something to someone, that really lets you know if you know it or not. So I was able to like deepen my knowledge of the game. Getting to physical therapy and taking care of his academics was, was number one. And then he would come and help out, you know, during the times he could do it, help out uh, Dom get ready. He's done a, a lot of mentoring to me. He's like another coach. He'd tell me every step, everything to do. That's a testament to his character. Like he wasn't gonna like not be a part of the team anymore. That wasn't even like an option. And who better to coach, you know, a sophomore than the most calming presence on the planet in the most pressure situations ever than Dalen McLemore. Because Coach Darius is usually upstairs calling the plays, and the first person who should come off the field and talk to him is Dalen, and nobody else. I'm too hectic. I'm like excited, and that became his role. Stuff's gonna happen in life, but it's a good life lesson. Just gotta get back up on your feet and keep moving. Hey, man. Man. That was for you, Dalen. That was for you, Dalen. After that, a lot of the season was dedicated to Dalen. You know, when you lose a guy like Dalen, and you know, losing probably the CCS Player of the Year to show this sort of camaraderie and love for one another and just really picking up Dalen and picking up everyone, the whole team, just, it's a fantastic performance, well, one for the ages. I, 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 I don't know how many people would have still picked us to do it, but I thought these kids, this senior class, they're special, they're unique, and um, they deserve every banner hanging in that gym, and hopefully we'll get a couple more. I'm just really excited right now. I got so much stuff going through my mind, I can't even think right now. CCS champions, we going all the way up to state. What are you looking forward to next? NorCal and state. We had the opportunity to host a, a regional playoff game. It was so exciting. When you get that far in the playoffs, you face teams that you've never heard before. And it's hard to scout teams and get prepared for them when you have absolutely no clue. San Joaquin Memorial here, I know they, they brought a legitimate undefeated football team. We found out they had two really skilled Division I caliber receivers and they had a really good quarterback. It was clear that San Joaquin Memorial was a talented team. Their quarterback will be a big time guy next year. A lineman going to Stanford. We got the text from Coach Walsh saying that it'll be our home game for North they had to make the bus trip to San Mateo for a, I believe it was a noon start that day. We're all hyped that we get another home game to represent Sarah at our field. And the weather was awful. Just an awful, awful day. And it was sunny in the morning, then windy, 
then rainy, then really windy, and really rainy. Just straight bipolar weather the whole game. They are Division One guys, we are Division One guys. And it just came down to who wanted it more. Let's go, baby! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Looking pretty good out here. I mean, the rain, no issue, no issue. Not zero. We will dominate our home, our game. Dominate. Best defense in CCS. No issue. Defense wins championship, baby. Let's go. So everybody up on me. Let's go. Hard talk, baby. Hard talk. No talking to the other team. We don't know these guys. They don't know you. There's no reason to talk to them at all. If you want to say good job or be a good sport? I'm fine with that. If you want to talk to each other? I encourage that. A lot of communication up front. There's no secrets out there. You guys can call out the plays. Let everybody know what's going on out there. You want football? Which way you want to kick? Every yard counts in this game. Remember, if we win the toss, we're taking the ball. That first drive is going to be crucial. Sarah's won the toss. He's chosen the machine. They're going to be going into the win. We need to win the second and the fourth quarters, along with the third, as we always do. Okay? We all we got. We all we need. We all we got. We all we need. I'm going to do my best Father Joe impression. But what I'd like you guys to do is consider the opportunity to play your asses off with so much freaking effort that we earn a couple more sunsets next week. You got me? Sure. So, I love each and every one of you. You know how I feel about this team. Who got my back? I got your back! Who got my back? I got your back! Let's go have some fun, baby. Three, one, two, three. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, and forgive those who trespass against us. Give us this time of temptation. CIF NorCal Division 1A Championship. San Joaquin Memorial taking on Sarah. A cold, windy, and rainy day in San Mateo. I'd say that was probably one of the toughest games. The environment was crazy. I've never seen a game like that at Sarah before. It would rain. And then next thing you know, it's all sunny. And it would be windy. And then it's back to the rain. Sideways rain. And the sun would be, like, shining. The conditions were miserable. Lampkin. Takes the snap, little screen pass to Hassan Mahasin, and Mahasin is going down the sideline, untouched into the end zone. Touchdown, Sarah, 40 yards on the screen pass. They were hyping up their receiver, and I'm over here thinking, like, oh, all right, he's going to Washington, I'm going to Washington State, like, it's going to be a good game. Third and eight, Collins hits his man, Jalen McMillan over the middle, but the ball is loose. It's a fumble, and recovered by Sarah and the Padres take over at midfield. Lampkin from the shotgun, fakes the handoff, has room. He's going toward the end zone and he's in for the touchdown. Just like that, 52 yards and Sarah's in control. <laughs> Collins, back to pass. Going up top, has a man open. Devon King in stride, touchdown. 46 yards, and San Joaquin Memorial's on the board. So fourth and 24 for San Joaquin Memorial. Collins from the gun, looking toward the end zone. Incomplete, intended for McMillan. Pass broken up nicely by Damon Lewis, and Sarah will take over. Three pass breakups in a row by the Padres secondary. First two probably should have been intercepted. Padres leading at 14 to 10. At the half. Hey, pay attention real quick. We use the championship pedigree team, both of us. That's why we're here. Okay, so you guys get your minds right, make your adjustments. It's business time right now. Take the emotion out, work on your eyes, figure out what we gotta do to win that third quarter. The weather was difficult, but you know, we managed to get through it. We're kind of like the underdogs in that game because they had a lot of D1 athletes. If you wash him off the wedge, we kick out right here. It's a touchdown. You see what I'm saying? Terrence! It's just do or die right there. Okay. Rolo's going to do a better job here. We knew coming in it wasn't going to be an easy game for the weather, just how good they are. They kind of rolled in thinking that they were going to beat us, but, you know, we showed up too. Sarah took the lead and held off a San Joaquin Memorial team. And I knew coming in I'd have to guard uh, Jalen McMillan. He said he's like a four-star recruit. Star don't matter as long as we show up and play harder than them. So uh, another level clicked in my brain and I just knew that I'd have to turn up and when that play had to be made, I'd have to make that play. So um, 24 minutes of football, right? 
I was just telling the offense on the other side what's very unique about this game is we're in week 14 and we're talking about May stuff. Right? It's probably the same on defense, right, Coach? Yep. yep. Eyes in the backfield, fitting your gaps. That's the unique thing about it, the great thing about this game. You spend all this time doing the same thing over and over and over again. It's called mastering the mundane. You want to master the mundane. You want to make peace with the most boring things in the world. And you just get better and better and better and better and better at it. Okay, and you come in here at halftime and you realize that all these things, everything's on the line, which we don't care about. All we care about is how much we love each other anyway, right? I don't care. I'm, I'm free. I feel so free right now. I feel so good right now being here with you guys. I don't really care what happens. I care about mastering the mundane. I care about getting our eyes right and making perfect plays and, 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 just make, and, ha and doing that with fantastic effort. That's all we can take care of right now. Okay, the rest is in God's hands. You feel me? Okay. This is a championship caliber team. They've won three or four games by two or three points. Right? So we, well, I'm, I'm not shocked. I mean, they're both, we're both champions for a reason. Okay? But this is our time now. This is our 24 minutes. This is our track workout. This is everything that we put into it. So I want you guys to fly around the field, man. Fighting for your lives out there. I love each and every one of you. Let's go get this. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Padres on three. One, two, three. Padres. One of the plays I remember in that game was Terrence LaVille making a pick six on the sideline. Collins throwing right. Intercepted. Terrence LaVille into the end zone. A pick six for Sarah. And the Padres lead 20 to 10. At that point, I was thinking, this is Sarah's game. There's no way they're going to lose. Yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah, let's go. Let's go now. We really do this out here. We really do this in Cemetery. Here's the snap, handoff going to Hornbrook. But San Joaquin Memorial, to its credit, fought back, made it a one-score game. End zone, touchdown, San Joaquin Memorial. They're not done yet. Back within five, 21 to 16. And then Sarah uh, put a championship drive together. 12 minutes, 12 minutes to play for each other right now. Play for each other right now, 12 minutes to go. Okay, let's extend that timeline, get another sunset next week. You guys got me? Okay, offense, when we get the ball back, play with your eyes. Okay, we have the win in the fourth. We need legendary drive, we need first downs. We made our adjustments in the Raider, we need to move the chains. You guys got me? You guys want to play one more game? Let's go! 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 let Dumps it off to Nate Sanchez. And Sanchez has the first down across midfield to the Panthers 45. Another big third down for the Padres. Lampkin has time, has a man over the middle. Terrence LaVille elevates for the first down. A gain of 20 on third and 11. Fourth and one for Sarah. A little pitch to Mahasin, cuts it back, and he's got the first down inside the 15-yard line. The drive continues. Lampkin flips to Lataimua, and Lataimua barrels into the end zone. Touchdown, Sarah. And Sarah leads it 28-16 to with just 3.47 left in the game. Collins back to pass, looking to the end zone. Intercepted! David Silk with the game clinching interception as he's taken down, and Sarah is gonna hang on to win it. He was running this. We're working for this, man. We're working for this. Believe that. Believe that. Believe that. The Sarah Padres are your 2019 CIF. North Cal Division 1A champions. To LA now, we're going to state, baby. The Padres heading back to the state championship for the third time in four years. Father Joe is one of the main reasons why I continue to coach here every single year. And um, I would be lost without him from a spiritual perspective. And I think you guys know how, how important Father Joe is to this program. I mean, literally, the guy has a gangster's heart in his body and it pumps violently for all of us. And he's the most humble human being on the planet. And he loves Sarah. And he loves everyone in here. He loves the coaches and he loves the players and he just, he cares so deeply about us. And I just feel like I miss him right now. I really do. Okay, so because of that, we're gonna handle this the way he would handle it. With the highest degree of humility, which I believe 
is becoming the core reason why this program exists. I love everybody! I love all of you guys! Is trying to figure out what it means to be humble, what it means to be living the uh, path of Father Joe, and, and to truly understand what that means. And I think every single day that, that we live this next week, all the sunsets we get to see, everything's the last thing. And that's a wonderful place to be, man. I, 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 you know, I don't want to make a deal with the devil, but if the devil told me exactly the day I was going to die, I tell you what, I would live every single day so freaking hard. And I'd set that date and I'd be like, this is what's going to happen. And I'm going to set that clock up here. And that's going to be the end of our dash. We're going to kick off at 407 down in Los Angeles. Okay? We're going to play either Corona Del Mar or, or Helix, I think. Or Oceanside. Okay? Both of whom are amazing football teams. We're humbled to have the opportunity to play them. And then we're going to set that dash. And you guys extended this dash as far as you can take a football season. And you should feel honored and proud about everything you've done and all the decisions you've made to get us to this point. You guys are unbelievable. I love you guys so much. And I'm grateful for everything that you guys have done for my family, for my wife, my kids, for our coaching staff. You guys are just the best. And I'm very, very thankful that you guys chose to come to Sarah High School and be a part of this and choose to play football. It's hard. It's a grinder's jubilee. This is a hard grind. It is a grinder's jubilee. And isn't it a joyous grind? And I want you guys to do me a favor. This week, I just want you to like, I want you to think and I want you to breathe and I want you to feel. And I want you to feel each moment that you're living next week. I want you to look around. I want you to look at nature. I want you to look at the sky. That, did you guys see the rainbow before the game? Yeah. yeah. Two, okay? That was fantastic. That was a message to us. I'm, I'm serious. Because what you're about to go through, not very many people get to go through. It. And you're going to be able to count these moments on one hand in your lifetime. And I don't mean that as a, as a depressing thing. I mean it as we know when we're going to die. We know the end of the dash is going to be 7 o'clock p.m. on Saturday. So why don't we live each moment like it is the last, because it is. I feel so blessed to have that opportunity with all of you. I really, really respect you seniors. I really, really respect you coaches. All the effort and hard work you men have done in the back is just exceptional. And it takes every oar in the water, on the boat, to get to this point. That goes from our administration, Father Joe, everybody's oars were in the water, and that's why we're here. Your effort was unbelievable today. I'll never forget it. I love you. Let's say a humbling prayer for Father Joe right now. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to the dish, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Sing you for What I love about football and Sarah football is the camaraderie. So unlike Coach Walsh, I was not an athlete in high school or college. As a priest, I love the idea of creating a space where these young guys are comfortable in church. And I don't care what their faith is. That's between you and God. It doesn't matter to me. What matters is you can come in here and not be afraid to pray, because that's going to stay with you in college. Okay, we always finish the way we started, right? The Our Father is our prayer that we do. It. We do it before every single game. We do it after every single game with Father Joe. Everyone's holding hands and coming together as one. So we say we stay humble. It's our brotherly prayer. Our Father. Lord, heaven, I love you, that name. Thank you, come. Thank you, it's a very simple prayer that crosses all denominations, traditions, and faith. Give us this day our daily bread, for we are such trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And the boys took it on as their own, and it became our prayer of brotherhood. Growing up Catholic and growing up a believer in God, those words that Father Joe would say would lock me in. Like, I would hear those words, I would feel the power within the room. We say it before and after every practice, too. And so the only thing we always do we take a moment of thanksgiving in God's presence. They grab a padre, they take a knee, I take a knee with them. And we just breathe thanksgiving, gratitude, humility. 
And then it's a simple prayer we've learned all of our lives, but it's become our prayer of brotherhood. It's a prayer of brotherhood that unites us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. It was such a, such a surreal feeling in a huddle when we would say those words after a game. It's our Father. It's not Father Joe's Father. It's our Father. You know, and it kind of picked up its own life as the years have gone by. It's our brotherhood prayer. Taylor back to pass. Looks right. Throws. Intercepted. Black time Mua. Sarah with their third CCS title in four years. I think the most uh, emotional one this year, and I, I just loved it, was um, you know, a very emotional game against Valley in the rain for the championship to go to state. And at the end of the game, as the kids gathered around and parents came down and we were all in that circle. And I just love what Coach, you know, what Patrick said. He talked about humility. We will not walk to the bus cocky. We will not walk off this field arrogant. We'll thank God everybody's safe. Nobody got injured on either team. We're in a good place. Thank God for our blessings, our graces. And Chapel came to the field. It was right there. Because we do that here every Thursday or Friday night. Every one of you lent something to this uh, program. All the coaches, all the parents, everyone in here had great love and brotherhood and humility. All the alumni here, this is one for the ages. Amazing victory. I'm so proud to be a Padre. God bless all of you. Father Joe, take us yeah. in. It all just fit just absolutely beautifully. And I remember thinking, this is our 19th year, man. But it just came together in a unique, beautiful way. So what I've learned from these guys over the years is um, they're tremendously dedicated in their own way to work as hard as Coach Walsh makes them work and to embrace that. I have to say the same thing about the coaches. You know, it's, it's, it's seven days a week <laughs> with Patrick, you know. It's intense. And their wives and girlfriends and they support it. So it's a whole unit, and for me to be part of, it's been a real blessing. Honestly, it's been a real grace in my life and in my priesthood. I really, really respect you coaches. All the effort and hard work you, get, you men have done in the back is just exceptional. And it takes every oar in the water, on the boat, to get to this point. All of them oars. Can't, one oar can't be out of the water. Everybody's oars were in the water, and that's why we're here. Your effort was unbelievable today. As the head coach of the program, as I looked around that day, there was a question whether or not we'd ever get back to a state championship game. Those things don't grow on trees, if you will. They're definitely not given to you. It's certainly earned through, you know, 14 games. Jeez, it's a long grind. So I'm like, I don't know if we'll ever get back there. One of the most thrilling things for me that day was looking around and looking at the coaching staff that was assembled like, I'm so freaking proud of these guys. You know, because 2018 was tough on us. I'm so proud of these guys. I was calling out their uh, hitches and China and all that, and number four and 15, they were looking at each other after the play ran, and they were like, dang, dude, they, they know every single play, but like, I just got to give the props to our DC. Every week he gives us a good game plan. Um, we, we stay ready, we study the film, and it's literally on the field. They run it. We just got a key on the players, that's it. Collins, throwing right, intercepted. Uh, but the bill pick, uh, the anticipation on that play. Um, how did he read that? Was he reading well, it was, uh, the I, it, was, it was the tendency of, of how the alignment of the receiver. Okay. And um, that's a testament to our coaching staff. Collins, back to pass, looking to the end zone. Intercepted! David Silk with the game-clinching interception as he's taken down, and Sarah 
is going to hang on to win it. Particularly Coach Monsef, Coach Bell, you know, the new coordinators that filled massive shoes of highly successful coaches that were awesome human beings and did a great thing for Sarah. And now they've become that. For those guys to, to overcome all that and the doubt and like you, Sarah will never be the same again without the similar coaching staff, like God bless them. That was, that was awesome. I talk a lot about the bottom of the fire here. Like, you know, we, we talk about, you know, the top of the fire, the flames are the most beautiful part and, and you know, everyone looks at the flame, but the, the, the heat, the real heat of the fire comes from the bottom. And a unique thing happened in this game. This is usually what happens. We talk about this all the time when we're lifting in here. Uh, we talk about who's that guy that's going to light the bottom of the fire? Who's that guy that's, you know, who's the scout team player of the week? Who, who's, who are the kids that, that aren't Terrence and, and Nate and Dalen and these guys that, that who's going to be that guy that could be remembered forever for the things that they did? Not only, you know, in, during practice, which we always celebrate, but in an actual game, like where you all of a sudden you're in there. And that's Adrian Primo this year. I remember the one play that I had was uh, late in the second half. They were driving down the field. They were going for shots for the end zone. The guy had a shot for the ball. I went up and made a play. Thankfully, broke it up against uh, one of their uh, D1 athletes, the wide receiver. And I got hit in the hip on that play. And uh, it was bugging me the rest of the game. I couldn't really like kick or run too aggressively with that. It appears Damon Lewis, the Padres' four-year varsity kicker, hurt his kicking leg at the end of the half while making a play. Adrian Primo, the rarely used backup, has taken over the kicking assignments. And he's our backup kicker to our legendary kicker. And something happens to, uh, to Damon's hamstring on, a, I think, a defensive play. And he goes, Coach, I cannot kick the ball. I just simply cannot kick the ball. Look, you've been kicking the ball for four years. Get out there and kick the ball. Coach, I can't kick the ball. Okay, all right, you're not kicking the ball. Hey, Damon, Damon, we're gonna have, we're gonna, we're gonna do a hard ground ball, we're we'll gonna have Primo kick. Adrian Primo went out there today, number 13, and kicked his, kicked so well for us. It was unbelievable, the kickoffs he had, he made two PATs. Bangs every single PAT, kicks the ball off, like, like I think he put one in the end zone. Here's the snap, good hold, kick is up, and it is through. Primo with the extra point, and Sarah leads it 28 to 16 with just 3.47 left in the game. We were having him pop the ball up. I mean, he became a, a weapon for the team, and that's the bottom of the Sarah football fire right there, just that those burning embers that, that light the rest of the team. And he became pretty much the MVP of that game or the MVP of the feeling of the team that day. Um, it was an awesome, awesome show of the fact that this, while we had 60 players on the team, we, we, you know, we're a top to bottom team. We're all in this together. Look at this legend. Adrian Primo is the biggest clown I have ever met in my life. Not even on this team, just in my whole life. Any time during practice, if you're having a bad day, if you walk up to him, he could most definitely make you laugh just by one of his antics. You know, he made picks. I know he made picks in the in the season. He was always that guy to, you know, that kept everyone engaged. The place is going nuts. The reaction on the sideline of the entire community when a kid makes a play out there that doesn't play very much is a testament to the breadth of the team and the depth of the team. And the 2019 team's depth when it came to loving each other was as deep as it gets. That warms my heart to think of that. When, when someone like that can come in for you know, the WCL kicker of the year and, and produce and make two field goals, not a lot of chaos or two PATs, I'm really proud of him. That will forever be my favorite game, just because it was the first ever NorCal game at home. And it was wet, it was raining, the sun was out after the, after the rain, so you saw a little rainbow in the, eye, the sky. And I'll never forget holding up that NorCal trophy and sliding into the grass. It's a feeling that not a lot of people get. And that whole day was, was committed to Father Joe. And, you know, kind of the, just the, the feeling we had after the game of embracing those moments and just enjoying that journey of next week, the Monday, the last Monday, the last Tuesday, the last Wednesday, the last Thursday. You know, you, only the teams that get to the last week get to say those things. The last chapel, the last bus ride, the last game, and no matter what happens, embrace each and every moment of that because it's never gonna happen again, and it may not ever happen again in the history of Sarah High School. You know, and given what's going on now, who knows? The Sarah Padres are your 2019 CIF NorCal Division 1A champions.
the Padres heading back to the state championship for the third time in four years. Not a lot of people get that feeling of, of winning something and putting your mind to, and I'll be forever grateful for that game, and it'll be one of my favorite memories for my whole life just because of that feeling of, of success. Those moments in your life need to be cherished because those moments in your life, and that's what I was kind of the message after the San Joaquin Memorial game, will be the fuel for the hard times. That will be the fuel because you know that you didn't take for granted those beautiful moments in your life. Because life is not, is not going to be easy. There's going to be some serious challenges in our lifetime. And right now, in 2020, we're all dealing with one of the biggest challenges of, of all time. And it's like those special moments where we held on to one another and held on to it and embraced it is the fuel that helps get through hard times. And so celebrating the, the rainbow of that day and you know feeling that cold rain and, and just really, really embracing the fact that we did that for Father Joe and knowing that he was going to be on the bus down to um, Cerritos College to play in another state championship game, another banner going in the gym, you know, again, necessary after the week 10 loss to SI. Well, now we just hung two more, two more banners. We are having team dinner tonight. At that point, we weren't like all locked in. We were just like having fun. We were being kids. And we were just enjoying like this once in a lifetime opportunity that we had with each other. And we were making the most of it. God, we thank you for gathering us today. Uh, uh, Sir Padres, you're getting us to LA safety. Uh, we ask you to bless this people for us. We ask you to speak our soul Amen. Amen. Sandwich with cheese. Hey, Azo, how big are you? Like 260? 285. 285. No, with a chicken sandwich and cheese for the past four years. Behind the like this, like this big. Nothing big. Nothing big. Behind the closet. Hey, shout out Mrs. Azo Party making the best sandwiches. Shout out Mrs. Azo Party. Shout out my town. My dudes. That's the dudes. The cool Azo Party. That's my show. state championship game without Dominic you know and it's just one of those those things where two really good forces two good kids came together and worked together and and got us to the, to the state championship game again and nobody could write a script about that out of the shotgun Macklemore to Sanchez he's in for the touchdown we knew uh, the further we made the season the further possible he was able to play again the week before is probably the hardest um, a lot of people don't know, but I didn't say anything that I was going to play or not. Oh, he was on the down low, like no one knew except like people on the team, like his close friends. Macklemore, back to pass, in a little trouble, and now scrambles to the end zone. Touchdown, Sarah Macklemore. Aaron Rodgers came back at week six uh, in the NFL after breaking his non-throwing collarbone. So there were some silver linings, if you will. 
It was not his right shoulder, it was his left shoulder. Luckily for me, that was probably the best injury I could have gotten. I'm not sure how, but it just worked that way. It was my uh, non-throwing shoulder on my left side, and it's a collarbone injury, so once you get surgery, it heals 100%. You know, maybe if we play, okay, we got week nine, 10, we got first round, second round, you know, like, wait a sec. You start doing the math, and it's like, well, it's possible that he could come back. So I practice a few times, and a lot of physical therapy for me. I was like, dude, that that last week ends up uh, happens to be on like the state game. So I'm thinking to myself, like, dude, if Day Day comes back, like, Dalen's gonna be back, and he's a weapon for us. Breaking news: Three-star QB Dalen McLemore is suited up for the Sarah Padres. It's still a question mark whether or not he'll start for the Padres. Coach Walsh told our producer earlier on after the team got off the bus that it will be a game time decision. I knew I was going to play, so once I got off the bus, I know I was 100% committed. I was ready for it. This is what I've been preparing for the whole season. But no matter what, it was always going to be a game day decision if we ever even get to that point. So the, the most important thing here is making sure that that Dalen's psyche, Dalen's psychology, Dalen's health, Dalen's is number one. There is no accident that at this stage of your life, you are in this room, this night. It was because of God, it was because of your family, because of the Padre Brotherhood, it was because of yourself. When all of that comes together, there is no room for fear. No room for fear. So I pray that you play fearless tomorrow. So chapel was something that is a combination of the De La Salle team dinners and, and they have a chapel service as well. Chapel is really about the, the team itself. First thing I talked about even in my interview with Brady and all those guys was I'm going to bring chapel to Sarah High School. Everything revolves around this team happens in chapel. You're an awesome football team, an awesome group of people who've come together We've gotten us to this point where there's Christmas lights and Christmas trees and we're playing football. I'll always relish this, this trip. I'll always relish these moments with you guys. I'll never forget this football Chapel, team. for us, has morphed into almost like a spiritual journey, a spiritual awakening each week, the day before the game. I just want to say, like, boys, like, this, this is probably going to be my last football game ever. And I'm so happy that I get to play with all y'all because I know Hey, y'all got my back, and I got yours all day, every day. It's not about touchdowns. Like, Sarah Chapel's about who we are as young men, young men of uh, faith, um, young men with challenges, and young men of opportunities. A good family, always been a family, nothing else but a family. I'm ready to go to war. I love you guys, you know how much I love you, but... I don't think in anyone's mind is more surprised that we're here right now. I feel like... Ever since we were freshmen, we were destined for this moment. We put all the work in, everything possible. 90% of our chapel services have nothing to do with the game itself. It turns into people bearing their souls to their brothers, talk about things that are painful to them and or enriching to them. And so throughout the season, you know, it has an ebb and flow to it depending on how we're doing. And we're two years ago after we won state on the sophomore bus, it was Nate. They hurt both of his shoulders that game. And I was like, why did you do that? Like, why did you keep going? It's like, because, you know, we might not go to state again, but like, here we are, you know. And like, we just need to make the best of it. It's probably like a lot of us are seniors. We all share a lot of high school game. And the ball off for you guys. To have that moment each week where those kids wrap each other in their arms and say, I love you, is, um, is a powerful thing. Football is the tool, it's the instrument. But the real bigger picture is how you're growing as a young man. And that's Chapel. Come on, Brad Wheeler! This last Padre Jumping Jack senior, let's go on me, on me! Padre Jumping Jack, on me! Ready, begin! <laughs> Take two. 
Sarah got down to Southern California, they knew they were going to be up for a challenge. Corona Del Mar, which had, had beaten St. Francis earlier in the season, featured a gifted quarterback. I mean, they had they had playmakers all over the field. Their quarterback, uh, Ethan Garbers, uh, was going to the University of Washington. Um, they had had a terrific season, and uh, if Sarah knew it was going to be a huge challenge. Corona Del Mar is a really talented team. They came out ready to battle like us too. Their offense was very, very tricky offense, a very like college-like offense. Ready to work right now. Fuck up, fuck up three, one, two, three. Come on. Get up that rock, baby. Get up that rock. Going into that state championship game, I knew that was going to be the last football game I'll ever play. Um, and my mindset was just to leave it on the table. I had to put shoulder pads on for the first time, which was definitely the hardest part. I probably adjusted my shoulder pads after each play because it just feels super uncomfortable for the first time. Uh, just a lot of pressure. I'm a senior, a meerkat as we call it, a team manager. I used to play football, but I really miss the seniors. So I thought this was a great chance to you know, get involved and be with my brothers again. Basically help with anything that the coaches need, whatever the players need, just try to make it run as smooth as possible. Before the games, we set up, we bring the balls out, we cut all the cards for the players, uh, like all the behind the scenes stuff. Right. Well, I used to play, and then last summer I had ankle surgery because I tore three tendons in my ankle. And then after that, I started because Coach Walsh was like, hey, you should try out managing. I'm like, okay. So I started managing, and then I really liked it. And I found out he has scholarships for it, and so now I'm on in state tuition to Boise State for managing. <laughs> We basically take care of all the equipment. I want 50 balls in and out. Drive all the We always look if there's something to do, we get it done. Being tough is physical and mental. And tonight was a culmination of being a tough organization. I thought the coaching staff was organized. I thought our Meerkats, everything was dry. We had dry footballs. It was just, our organization was off the charts. Extra gear bag, ball bag, extra cleats, whiteboards. Other stuff. They were a big part, you know. They were behind the scenes, you know, they didn't get a lot of credit, you know, they didn't get all that, but you know, thanks to them and you know them working with the coaches, I'm very thankful for them and they're part of the family. Hey, we work all season long for moments like this. All season long. Bottom line is this, these type of games are won with your eyes up and your chest out and your breath. A lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of excitement. This is awesome. This is what we, this is what it's all about. This is what being alive is all about. Helios is dropping in the sky. We're all here together. This is what it's about. And when you're together like this, and when you understand the purpose of our mission, which is being together, the simple thing you have to do is simply play for one another. Just play for the man to the right, play for the man to the, to the left. When you're running gassers and you're tired, when you're running the track and you're feeling sorry for yourself and all those things, all you gotta do is think about someone else and life immediately gets better. So in today, when there's arduous times, tough times, when the chips are down or any of that sort of stuff, there's gonna be some challenges today in these 48 minutes. You look to the man on, to the left, you look to the man on the right and understand that this is a brotherhood. Understand that we're playing for love, brotherhood, and humility. This is what it's all about. Let's have some fun, baby. I love each and every one of you. Let's go have some fun. Father Joe, take it away. Right, Look. Finish the way we started, right? Our right, Father. CIF Division 1A State Championship. What a matchup. The Sarah Padres, 13 and 1. West Catholic Athletic League co-champions, Central Coast Section Division I champions. The Padres beat San Joaquin Memorial in the CIF D1A NorCal Finals. Taking on Corona Del Mar, the Sea Kings, 15-0. Sunset League champs, Southern Section Division III champions. The Sea Kings beat Oceanside 14-7 to win the CIF D1A SoCal Finals. Looks like Dalen McLemore is going to start for the Padres. The fans loving it. A touchback will start the offense at the 20. 
Here we go, snap to McLemore, and a trick play. McLemore gets the ball back, has a man open, Nate Sanchez caught downfield and thrown out of bounds after a gain of 20. Third and eight for the Padres, McLemore steps up in the pocket, has a receiver, it's Terrence LaVille caught between two defenders. 27 yards and a first down at the 30-yard line. McLemore from the shotgun on first and 10. Takes the snap, keeps it himself, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Sarah. The Padres on the board first. Corona Del Mar, no problem moving the ball at all. Washington-bound QB, Ethan Garbers keeps it. Makes a couple man miss, still on his feet, and he's in the open field for a 29 yard gain. Garbers on the keeper. Touchdown, Corona Del Mar with a quick answer. You gotta get them off the field. That's the key to games like this, all right? They're good football teams. They're gonna make plays. But we have them now, we have to make them play. Hey, D-Line, we got we to gotta strike and check. We got to strike and check. Third and one for Corona Del Mar. Garbers looking for Bradley Schlom, and he gets the feet down. What a catch for the touchdown. Schlom, another Pac-12 kid going to Stanford. Corona Del Mar takes the lead. Garbers takes the snap. Has time, throws, intercepted! What a play by Jackson Montaimua! And he's across the 30-yard line before being tripped up out of bounds. Big play by the Padres defense. Second and six, McLemore. Has plenty of time. Throws right, intercepted. Chandler Fincher with the pick for Corona Del Mar, and there he goes, finally taken down. That's only McLemore's fourth interception of the year. Fourth and one from the one yard line. Garbers toward the end zone, stuffed! What a play by the Padres defense! C-O-L-E Helu making the stop, and he keeps it a one score game. A great defensive stand to end the half. It's 14-7. You guys showed a tremendous amount of heart, a tremendous amount of effort to end that half right there. That was a good 24 minutes of play. We're playing a championship team who's also playing a championship team. We're all champions out here, you understand? That's why this thing feels like a heavyweight fight. That's the way it's supposed to feel like. We throw a couple body blows, they throw a couple body blows. But the key is the 15th round. The key is the 15th round. The key is playing all 48 minutes, right? Right now the ball comes out. They're calling it a fumble. And another turnover for Sarah. Listen, this is what life's all about. This is how competitors live right now. If you love this shit, you got problems. This is the greatest thing in the world. This is the drug we've been talking about. This is natural. This is the stuff that flows through your brain. It makes you live forever. You think about this for the rest of your life. Love this shit. And I love the way you guys are playing, but I know we have a couple more. I know we have a few more levels. I know we do because I've seen it, and I know there's something deep here. And I want you guys to dig in there as deep as you can and give everything you can for the last 24 minutes. Give it to me. Let's go. Show it, baby. Let's go. 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 let us uh, several weeks earlier, had been cleared to play and was behind center when the when the Padres opened that game. Looks like Dalen McLemore is going to start for the Padres. The fans loving it. I mean, a lot of things going through my mind. So I had to simplify everything. Uh, go back to what we were doing the whole season. Third and eight for the Padres. McLemore steps up in the pocket, has a receiver. It's Terrence Laville caught between two defenders. 27 yards and a first down. You know, and it wasn't until 30 seconds before the game to where I looked at Dalen and he's like, I'm in. He's an athlete, he's a competitor. Like, there was not that many things that were gonna stop him from playing that game. Anyone who was there will remember Dalen's uh, game opening drive. It was different running the ball, uh, just knowing that 
have to slide more, I have to protect myself. Something I'll have to do in uh, college more. So it was good to get that experience. McLemore from the shotgun on first and 10. Takes the snap, keeps it himself, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Sarah. The Padres on the board first. It was just fun scoring at the end, knowing that, like, that was back pretty much. It was good to know that he came back um, to have like a senior captain to be there again with our offensive line and all that. Uh, it was so good. I mean, it was just brilliant uh, what the what the Padres did on that opening drive to take a seven to nothing lead. It was a terrific start for the Padres. McLemore quickly throws right. It's going to be a double pass, and Terrence Laville is open. Laville down the sideline. There he goes. 10-5, touchdown Sarah, 65 yards on the trick play, and the pass from Sanchez, and Sarah's back within one score. Championship play has got to be made. We don't go down without a fight. We're in this game. It's going to be hard. They're really good. All right, they're going to make a few plays. Corona Del Mar answers back with a four-minute, 14-play, 99-yard scoring drive. Schlong with a one-yard plunge into the end zone. 28-14, Sea Kings in command. It's last game I'll ever play. Put your heart on the f***ing field and finish the f***ing game. Still plenty of time for Sarah. We know we're better. We know we're better. Do it for the name on the front. One, two, three. McLemore from the shotgun on first and ten. Takes the snap to Terrence LaVille. And what a catch by LaVille. A one-handed grab. Check out this catch, SC top 10 worthy. The one-handed grab down the line. LaVille gonna be a big time playmaker at the next level. First and 10 from the 19 yard line. McLemore in trouble and sacked. The third sack of the day for the Corona Del Mar defense. It was clear that Corona Del Mar knew that it needed to put pressure, put heat, on McLemore, I mean, I remember telling some of my colleagues in the press box that uh, that he is, you know, was taking some hits in that game. Um, unfortunately, one that was uh, out of bounds later in the game, I believe it was in the second half, uh, knocked Dalen out of the game for good. It was a, a hit out of bounds. McLemore drops back. This time he has better protection. Now he's got to run to the left side, trying to get to the sideline. And a late hit, a flag is down, a late hit out of bounds. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Defense, at the distance to the goal, second down. Listen real quick, you gotta score right now. Believe in your heart that we're gonna win. Believe it. Your effort is there. You just gotta make a couple more plays to finish this game out, you got me? Padres on three, let's go. One, two, three, Padres! Dalen coming back, being able to come back for that game, I mean, it's he's a warrior. He's so tough. He played a great game. I think he was like 16 for 18 or something like that. And he ended up getting hurt on what I'm going to call a cheap hit, late hit out of bounds. I think we were down 35-14. 5.25 left in the game. Garbers rolling left, fires it to John Humphreys, and it's a touchdown for Corona Del Mar. Garbers just became the second player in California history to throw 70 touchdowns in a single season behind Folsom's Jake Browning, who did it twice. Browning is with the Vikings now, also played for the Washington Huskies. I mean, that game was over. Fourth and one for Sarah. Play action fake, pass, knocked down, incomplete. I mean, it was done. And Sarah will turn it over on downs. But I think, in turn, that hit showed you what the 2019 Padres were all about. That kind of motivated us, to be honest. Dominique Lampkin takes over under center. They fought for their brother, got an emotional lift when Dominique Lampkin came in. He did, I believe, drop his first snap. And he fumbles the first snap. Maybe some jitters there from the sophomore. That'll bring up fourth down. And with five minutes to go, uh, the people on the Seraph sideline said, no, this game is not done. Four minutes left, Lampkin starts to settle in at QB. Scrambles left, hit for the first down. 
Gets an additional 15 yards for the targeting hit. But after that, after taking a hit, Dominique Lampkin said his adrenaline started flowing and the Padres showed what they were all about. Lampkin over the middle to Terrence LaVille, touchdown Sarah. The extra point is no good, so it's 35-20 Corona Del Mar. Second and 17 from the Sea Kings 30. Sarah got the ball back thanks to Will Mauer's recovery of the onside kick. They can't afford to waste any more time. Lampkin rolls left, heaves it up in the air toward the end zone. It is caught for the touchdown. What a catch by Matt Rolandi in the back of the end zone with a defender draped all over him. And Sarah is back within one score. It's 35-27. Sarah got the ball back and started from their own 13-yard line with 1.49 left. Now they have a minute left to play. Second and 10, ball on the 40-yard line. Quick pass to LaVille, makes the catch, splits the double team, picks up a few more yards for a first down, gain of 18 on the play. 32 seconds left, second and 10. Lampkin trying to find someone, now he'll run it toward the sideline, and he gets out of bounds at the 32, a first down for Sarah. 25 seconds to go, Lampkin throwing left for LaVille, makes the catch, and gets out of bounds at the 20, another first down for the Padres. First and 10 for Sarah, just 17 seconds remaining. Lampkin drops back, flushed out of the pocket, rolling right, throws, it's on the ground and ruled incomplete. So that'll stop the clock with nine seconds to go. Last chance for the Padres. Lampkin from the shotgun, under pressure. He rolls out to the left, throws it to the end zone, intercepted by Tommy Griffin, and that should do it. What a great comeback effort by the Padres. Nothing to hang their heads about, but this one hurts for the seniors for sure. One of the best records in school history, Sarah at 13 and two. But congratulations to Corona Del Mar for winning their second CIF state title in school history. The second time in school history they finished 16 and 0 as well. Welcome everybody, uh, far and wide. I know that there's there's people uh, who have called in. Our our younger or underclassmen have called in uh, to be with all of us. It's wonderful to faintly see all those wonderful seniors sitting out there on a, a beautiful sunsetting evening. I'm so honored to be the head coach here at Sarah High School in front of all of you this evening. Um, we, we literally lived a dream together. And I think one of the major lessons of, of this season was when we are living those moments where we know life is, is almost pure, as pure as it could ever get, is to embrace those moments. And that's what the fall of 2019 was for all of us. It started off as our goal was to be a tough organization. And you all remember that grinding summer. And, and we had two basically organizational goals, and that was to be tough and to be organized with our new staff. And I believe we accomplished those goals. Tonight will be, it's a unique night. We're gonna basically focus our attention on you guys sitting out there, you seniors. You lost your graduation, you lost prom, you lost a bunch of stuff, but tonight's your night. Tonight's the night for the seniors. So you guys sitting out there, you seniors, put your hands together for yourselves right now. Great job, man, great season. This year, this group, it's not what they did, it's how they did it. That's the thing. We've won a lot of Sarah football games with Coach Walls. So it's not the what, it's the how. How we did it. How they kept humility. They kept that. They treasured that. And it was tangible. It was real. It wasn't put on. You can tell when it's fake. And this was not fake. This is real. These guys got it from day one. They worked really hard in the summer. They got trust. And we had plenty of humor, too. Shut up! That's for you, Dave. Hey, that's for you. We did it. It's been a blessing 
honestly, my four years of Sarah playing football with y'all, you know, created relationships with you guys, friendships. I mean, I came into Sarah freshman year, and I just told myself I just got to be a second string. And it's been a brotherhood, like, from my, from my heart. You guys helped me believe in myself. Every time I step on that field, I believe that I can do anything because if you guys have my back and you guys support me all the way. I'll tell you one thing, the key moment of this last championship year, um, when we went all the way to state finals, was the game we played Reardon. And the theme for Chapel was mental toughness, which doesn't mean lifting weights, and it doesn't mean running gassers. It's mental toughness. And what was that? You know, I remember looking at them and we started to talk about the toughest kids on our team are the kids who will not play this Friday night. Unless we're up by 30 points, they're not gonna play. Okay, the toughest kids on our team is the scout team. The bottom of the fire, the scout team players, people just playing their role. We would have All-American Erickson who would come out there and shine and make us better every day. We have players like Luis, all our junior and sophomore classes. And the scout team runs the opponent's offense and defense against our number one guys. You do work for the other guys, and it may not get recognized, but everyone around you knows without your help that they wouldn't be able to make those plays or they wouldn't be in the right position. Let's get going. Let's go. Okay. And if we have the fortunate occurrence of doing well in the third quarter or whenever, if you guys get a chance to get in that game, we expect Padre football until the freaking whistle dies at the end of the game. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So the truth is, they get blasted running the opponent's play against our first team. These are the toughest kids on this team. I'd say the most pressure is put on their back because they have to get us right weekly. That's where the bottom of the fire really is. It's that humility of working for one another and working as a unit. They're playing Sarah football not to go to college. They're playing Sarah football to make you better. Halftime made a ton of adjustments, and these young guys coming up and being ready to just play and make plays is huge. Because, you know, when we're up by a lot, and, uh, or if seniors get injured, we got to have these young guys being able to step up. And all this uh, hard work in the offseason and preparation that we've had has really prepared them to be able to step up and make plays. They're not scared of us. They want to help us win. They're just for the team. That's it. That's their goal. They saw something greater and they came for their own reasons. They know how much you do and how much you really put in to help out with the team. Great job! And it was real good seeing the young guys come out and the secondaries, you know, like Primo with his, with his uh, interception. That was real nice, having that Padre energy come out, you know. It's good to see that spirit come back for the team and seeing the younger guys come out and shut them out. They just show so much pride in doing that. Yeah. It's not just us, we cheering on the whole team. We get everybody better here, over here. That night and the next day, the seniors and the starters rallied and dedicated the game to the scout team. And that, for me, I knew we had something very special that night. Because I remember standing in this chapel saying to Coach Wallace, I go, hey man, we got something special here. These guys get it. They get it. And that spirit of humility and that spirit of gratitude, just saying like, man, thank you for putting out. In the heat, in the cold, man, you are there every week and you're not even gonna play this weekend. Thank you. That's what carried us as far as we went. Honest to God, no doubt about it. And that comes from Patrick's vision of Chapel growing as a young man and taking that out into a, a football field. It all came together this year. And you know, Coach, thank you. Thank you for everyone in this room, uh, for everything that you guys have done for all of us. You know, every, there's a lot of changes in life, but what will always remain the same is this relationship we've made. And you guys will always hold a special place in my heart. This team, like, truly loved one another. Like, a deep sense of community and a deep sense of love. Where I'll also tip my hat to our team mom, Joyce Dison. Put your hands together for Joyce. Yeah, that's
took that sort of love and spread it to the parent community. We invited everybody in. There's nothing better than practicing on Thanksgiving. And uh, the fact that all of you are here, all you parents, that you've chosen to send your kids here, be a part of this wonderful school and a wonderful part of this community. This is what uh, high school football is all about. And this was a big time we thing this year. Our parents like were just, people are like, oh, it must be hard to work in, in high school sports. Like, and those parents must drive you nuts. I'm like, no chance, man. No chance, not a Sarah. I love the parents. We're in this together. And that feeling of community and camaraderie was palpable this year with our parent group and our kids. We have deep relationships forming here, and hopefully between the parents and our players that'll last a lifetime. That's the goal. Thank you to the parents for the food. We really appreciate it. Of course, happy Thanksgiving. Would say that. Thank you for the delicious food, everything. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for everything. We're thankful we appreciate for it. it. Thank you. If a team leaves here without that core sense of truly loving one another, then myself and our staff feels like we've failed the kids. What I'd like everyone to do at this moment is just listen to the sounds around you, feel the breeze, and just, I want everyone to be great, grateful and thankful for just being alive today. Coach Walsh is the prime example of how to be a family man. My dad passed before I came in here, and he's always been trying to get me right, trying to keep my head on straight. I've been thankful for him. He's been a father figure to me. Ever since I've got here, he's shown me nothing but pure love. He knows I'm an emotional player, and he's always there to connect with me. Coach Walsh loves his family. He loves us like family, and he's the best role model of how to be a dad. It's been a long time coming, man. <laughs> love this family. And I think I'll, I'll take that into my life and possibly into my future of being a father myself. <laughs> and I'll think of Coach Walsh and how much love he has for Charlie. Charlie and Willie, oh, I love you, son. and his wife, and how much he loves other people. I wouldn't want anyone else to be a head coach for me, to be honest. He just played an outstanding role in my life, my football life, just my personal life. He's just always there for me. Every Saturday or every Friday night, you'll see Charlie running up and down the sidelines, barefoot, in the Chewbacca costume that probably hasn't fit for the last couple years, but. He still fits into it. I mean, he's part of the team. And if you ever wanted to find Coach Walsh, just find the little kid in the Chewbacca outfit, and he's right there at Coach Walsh's leg. He'll show up to practice. He'll, he'll, he'll mess around with you. He'll talk to you. He'll talk crap to you. Being the head coach's son on the football field gives you a certain level of uh, power. Hey, be on the sidelines. But he's a part of the team. He, he was a fun kid to be around just because of his personality. There's a picture in, uh, from 2017 when uh, we won state, one of the players, he uh, holds him up on stage and he's holding the trophy and like he really feels like a part of the team. Well, um, it's great, great. <laughs> and I remember this year when we were down, uh, you could see him on the sideline crying. Like that's how much he loves it. Like it's all he knows. It's what he grew up with his entire life. And so he's part of the brotherhood. He's like a little brother to everybody. And every, I can't wait to see what he does when he's in high school, because I'm sure he'll be a hell of an athlete. But it's just great to see him and running up and down the sidelines, knowing that you've got his support and that you're playing for him in a way. Shout out, Charlie. The Padre Brotherhood runs deep, man. There's nothing like Sarah High School. We all know the saying, once a Padre, always a Padre. It holds a lot of meaning to it, and the respect stays with you throughout your life. There's a reason why there's three banners going up in the gym at Sarah, you know, for the 2019 season, is we have some great players. A lesson I learned about playing Padre football is what humility means. That's how many touchdowns Nate Sanchez has. Give him an offer. Offer that man up. When you put other people before yourself, it's powerful. And that's what Sarah Football taught me, was how to be humble, how to go out there every day and do things for other people, and not be selfish, and not be complacent ever in life. When I look at what these guys did this year playing through injuries, it was that Padre love. It really was. It had nothing to do with college, nothing to do with their stats. It was, we're brothers. I'm here. I'm going to go out. Uh, I messed up uh, my ankle half in Bay game. Uh, with the date of the first time I scored, I got rolled up on, and from there on out, I was hurt. Um, so behind the scenes, is, uh, I didn't end up practicing the rest of the year. 
I only played games the rest of the year. I was there practicing outside. I would dress up sometimes. But on Thursday, Friday, I would dress up. I wouldn't even practice, and I'd have my ankle taped and everything, try to do what I can. But after the Halfman Bay game, I can say I wasn't fooling myself at all. I was dealing with the ankle injury. I was always doing everything to get back in all week, and I pretty much went back out, messed it up again, and did it week over week until state game where I finally went down, and they took me out. They said no more. And I tried to fight back to go back in, but they took me out and let me go. Taken by Sanchez. Pushing his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Sarah. Nate's the, the perfect role model for every young Sarah Padre trying to be a football player. He's so tough. He, I mean, he's extremely tough. When we were juniors, we, we lacked leadership in some ways, and he was probably the only junior that really was standing up the whole entire year, like trying to keep us motivated, trying to keep us going. And going into senior year, he was an obvious captain, and he just... He supported everybody all year and he was a great leader for us. We wouldn't be Sarah football as we know it without Nate Sanchez. It is a shock to me that a guy like that is not playing somewhere for free in college somewhere. It's going to happen, it just didn't happen right now. But the intangibles that Nate Sanchez brought to this football program, he'll go down in, in history as one of the best we've ever had here uh, on so many levels. The injuries to Nate, I, I don't even have words to say, the toughness of that kid. You know, he, oh my goodness, he was banged up. Really, really amazing that he went out on the field and performed as he did. On the scramble. Sarah had the momentum, but it ended with McLemore getting hurt on the late hit. Now Nate Sanchez is hurt. Yeah, I was hurt every game. I was just feeling that thing, going fighting through that. To walk off the field in pain. We may not see Sanchez back on the field again, a huge loss. And just thinking of him that night, limping off the field, he gave so much to this program, physically, emotionally, spiritually. He's MVP for a reason. There was a lot of pain uh, after the game, but we just kept battling the whole game. Uh, we had ups and downs, Jalen getting hurt um, by that kid. And then I remember pancaking him on the next play because he hit Dayton. A lot of emotion. Dalen just coming back, you know, being our guy who had been with us for four years, it just felt right. Nobody really sees that this part of Dalen we see at practice. He's very quiet and stuff. He's not, he doesn't brag about his touchdowns or shaking people out their shoes like how he usually does. McLemore from the shotgun on first and ten. Keeps it himself and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Sarah. The Padres on the board first. I was hoping that we get the ch I get the chance to play again with them. That I had their back, and that uh, they know that I was dying to be out there. So it just added to our confidence. Of course, Dom went on an insane run, and we trusted in him too. It was flowing with Dom there. Lampkin drops back, surveys the field, over the middle to Terrence Laville, touchdown, Sarah. Either way, we, if he was the QB and Dalen couldn't have come back, we would have had the same confidence. And they're back within 15. Just things didn't work out our way, but honestly, with a team like this, sometimes it doesn't matter if you win or lose. Sometimes you lose the battle, but you win the war. McLemore quickly throws right. It's going to be a double pass, and Terrence Laville is open. Laville down the sideline. There he goes. 10-5. Touchdown, Sarah. 65 yards on the trick play, and the pass from Sanchez. And Sarah's back within one score. From that point, it was just the journey to me, you know what I'm saying? It's not about the state game, it's about what led up to the state game. What makes that state game so powerful to us. The Sea Kings 30, Lampkin rolls left, heaves it up in the air toward the end zone. It is caught for the touchdown. What a catch by Matt Rolandi in the back of the end zone with a defender draped all over him. And Sarah is back within one score. It's 35-27. It was something to see, and Sarah was 20 yards from tying that game up with seconds to go, and even though they fell short, nothing to be, nothing to hang their uh, heads about in that game. I mean, it was an amazing, stirring comeback, uh, emotional comeback, something that, you know, you would you would expect from a Patrick Walsh team who breathes emotion into his team. Throws it to the end zone, intercepted by Tommy Griffin, and that should do it.
What a great comeback effort by the Padres. Nothing to hang their heads about, but this one hurts for the seniors for sure. Man, that one was really hard. Uh, nobody wants to lose or anything, but I think we gained so much from that uh, throughout, uh, throughout the whole journey, getting there and back. Satisfaction, I don't feel like it's really there. Uh, I want to go out with a bang. I think a lot of the senior wants to go out with a bang, and uh, you know we were there. Uh, we had the chance. It's not our time. Not not what we planned. Uh, we ended up not winning. Well, we got the outcome we wanted. We look inside ourselves and we ask ourselves at the end of the year: Did we squeeze the orange? Did we get the most out of this team, physically and spiritually, that we could have? Again, it's not what they did this year. It's how they did it. You talk about the credo of Sarah is to be a man of faith wisdom and service, and they were. They had wisdom as they grew. And their service was to each other. And their service was respect for the other team. And we had that, we had that all year. Knowing that um, you gave it your all was really our biggest accomplishment. Everybody went home with no regrets. Of course, you didn't want to lose, but. It's a brotherhood. I mean, winning or losing, it's still a good time with them, like, honestly, because I can reflect on all the good times before that loss. That was ugly kids over here. Whoa, ugly kids yeah, over here, bro. Kids. I'm <laughs> ugly too. Where's your man? I don't need to win a state title to be close to with all my brothers out there. Last one. Last one. Get up! Get up! All you, all you, all you! talked about just all the sacrifices everybody made. I didn't feel like we lost the game. The tears that, that shed from my eyes that day, I was sad because it was over. I would just say to the seniors, uh, my deepest gratitude, they inspired me. They inspired me by their trust, their trust in Coach Walls, their trust in their code, their trust in themselves. You can feel that brotherhood and that, that type of connection that uh, the coaches speak about. Like you see uh, me, Lucy, all of us, we still hang together. Uh, it's gonna be like that for life, and you start to realize like who's gonna be there for you. Those bonds you create are just for life. Macklemore, going deep, has a man, and it's caught in stride. Nate Sanchez with a touchdown, fifth touchdown of the night. I feel like the legacy is still there, and I played three years on varsity. I believe I did something big. I believe a lot of people did something big, whether or not people see my face or Nusi's face or Dede's face, Jackson's face, Terrence's face in the newspaper and all this, but at the end of the day, it's not us really doing anything. It's the people around us who are creating something bigger than that. Um, I got my grandma right here. I got my little sister right here, my little brother, my dad. And that's what this community is around here. It's bigger than what you guys see and everything. Behind the scenes is more important than what you guys see. This year, I could have coached five more weeks. I could have coached through Christmas. <laughs> you know, knowing what I know now, it's in 2020, I wish I was still coaching right now, this moment. I would coach, I'd coach straight through every single weekend because the kids made it so enjoyable to show up every single day, to be on that field, to watch them practice and get better. The coaches made it no adult drama. The parents made it the easiest place to work in America. The administration was fully supportive of everything that is Padre football. It doesn't stop here. It's going to continue on to all your wonderful colleges. Congratulations to everybody here. There was absolutely zero disappointment because I couldn't ask anything more from a community of human beings. The love and the effort put into the season, no one has any regrets. No one have any regrets from 2019. I'll never forget, as I've said, um, that night when they stood up and thanked the uh, scout team. I thought we arrived as a team that night, and it was early in the year. And sometimes it takes time to build that. But with this group of seniors, it was there from the beginning, right to the last play in the end zone of the last game of the season. It was there. A round of applause for the Sarah Padres. today? Close contact with COVID? Sitting here in uh, May of 2020, it's a longing feeling now. I long for it. And I'm hopeful that 
you know, we can we can rally and fight for the kids and make sure the 2020, 2021, 2022 team and all kids across the country can get the opportunity to feel what this team in 2019 felt. In our last chapel, we always say, this has been all about who you're going to be five, ten years from now, and I have complete faith. Trust. Trust in who they are as a class. Trust as who they are as individuals and as young men. I'm just very proud of them and very grateful. What is that about? Long after the sting of this dissipates and the pain that you're feeling, you're going to look back on this season with nothing but appreciation, love, respect, humility, all the wonderful things that make you who you are. One of the greatest teams has ever blessed us here at Sarah. You seniors have given us so many gifts, so many things to celebrate, so many things that we can hang our hat on. All you youngsters, you should look up to this senior class, one of the best we've ever had. And I can, sadly, I can speak from experience. In 2016, we lost. It hurt, it hurt for a little while, but several days later, months, whatever, it all goes away. And what you remember are the guys you're leaning on right now, the guys that you're hugging right now, the guys you're crying with right now. And that's okay. You guys extended the dash as long as you can humanly take it. You push it out to the bitter end. And it's okay to feel pain. It's okay to feel pain because we lost the game, which we can live with, but this great, beautiful journey is now over. But what's gonna always remember, and what's always gonna last, is these relationships. Nobody can take that away from us. I love each and every one of you for your contributions. I love each and every one of you for the effort that you put into the season that started in 2018 and played in December. Christmas trees, practicing with Christmas trees up. You guys gave me all out there tonight. You guys are breaking their bodies down. Playing 15 weeks of football with a bye week in 16 weeks. We played an NFL season. And you guys gave it your all. You guys laid it out there on the field for one another. And that's what we're going to remember. I promise you that's what you're going to remember. You need three beautiful banners hanging up in the gym. I know there's one that we want up there. But nothing's going to take away these relationships. I love you and I'm humbled to be your head coach. Okay, let's just take a quiet moment and finish the way we started, right? And what we said last night in chapel about character, you are it. Our Father. Love you guys, Gina Brosa! Great bro! See you in the hut! Thank you guys, love you. I love you all. Family on me, family on me, family on three, one, two, three! Family! For the most valuable offensive player, uh, when I think of the word resilient, uh, I think of the word intestinal fortitude, I think of the word will, and I think that a big part of our team's success uh, was because of uh, David McElmore. Can't tell you how much I
going to present the most valuable offensive back. This guy's a three-way player. Uh, offense, defense, special teams. Um, and wherever he was on the field, uh, honestly, the only way I can describe him is he's just a straight-up dog in every sense of the word. Uh, and that's Terrence Laville. To, to get out and get up here tonight and uh, announce the most, most valuable offense lineman. Plays the game with a tremendous amount of fire, tremendous amount of passion. Uh, is not shy to tell you how he feels. He was a, a dog in the weight room. He was a great leader for those around him. Made out of the party. Pacifica. Next up uh, is our most valuable defensive player. You know, from a captain's perspective, from a leadership perspective, from all the things that, that you had to do to become the person that you are, the student that you always were. You're going to the University of Virginia, one of the finest colleges in the country in the ACC. I, I just can't say enough about the legacy you left here as not only a defensive player, our, our, our MVP of defense, but mostly the person you are. And uh, you'll never be forgotten here. Your legacy will last here forever. So I love you very much, News. Great job. Congratulations. This guy, we tried to bring him up as a sophomore. Um, we, we saw how good he could be. He had a look in his eye uh, that said, I'm going to dominate this year. I am the best one of the best D-linemen in the WCAL. I think I think uh, the Iceman is is a man of not a lot of words, but he puts it into action. Ice, I love you. Congratulations. You deserve this award. The uh, Defensive Lineman of the Year goes to Marcellus Ice. Uh, Ice. You know, in the 13 years that I've been coaching here at, at Sarah, I can only think of one other guy that um, was as feared and respected in the secondary as, uh, as this player. Um, you guys know we've got a couple safety blitzes named Thunder and Lightning, which I think uh, are appropriate because that describes the way he plays. And uh, on a couple of occasions this year, uh, you know, opposing coaches came up to me and said that uh, their receivers were literally scared to catch the ball because of this player. They always wanted to know where he was. And, you know, I've also seen on a couple of occasions guys catch a pass and literally just fall down because they didn't want to face the consequences of dealing with this young man. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's been an honor uh, to coach him for the last three years and uh, wish him the best of luck at Washington State. And that's uh, the great Jackson Lifetime move. Uh, Coach Ron Ortiz with our most valuable special teams player. This is a big mystery here, so hope you can keep it together, Coach. Obviously, Damon Lewis is a four-year varsity player. Uh, you know that his kicking record will ever be broken. Uh, maybe. Uh, Nick and will come back and break it one day. great football player who selflessly gave themselves to the program never come off the field when it came to scout teams next up is the Dan Nightingale Memorial Award and Shiv Patel is our Dan Nightingale Memorial Award he dominated he was amazing amazing defensive end for us this year his spirit you can't coach a kid's spirit. He loves football. He loves you guys. He loves getting out there. I'm very, very honored to, to, to say that I coach Jerry. Go get your award. You are one of the Western Court award winners for Absolutely. He was a, the technician was his nickname. You know, he, he consistently showed up and played his tail off. Jack Evelacqua, West Court Award. Love you, man. Great to be out there.
the Tom Scott Most Inspirational Award. I've had this guy for the last two years. He's a great kid. He's gotten exponentially better from his junior year to his senior year. Will Maller is our Tom Scott Award winner. And what a great year you had, Will. Uh, I'm so proud of you. I love you to death. Great job, Will. Shout out Coach Thomas. Shout out Coach our Thomas. Our final individual award here that you guys voted on is our most valuable player for the 2019 season. We had just an incredible amount of talent. We had the first time ever we've ever, ever had seven captains voted uh, for the team. Um, this man stood above a, uh, stood above us all there this season, and and that's that's a really kind of tall thing to say actually because of all the greatness that this senior class had. But Nate Sanchez. Uh, gave life and limb to this team. When I think of a multiplier, I think of someone that, that is on the field or at practice or in the weight room that, that literally just makes everybody around you better just by who you are and the heart that you gave. And that's why you are the 2019 MVP. So put your hands together one more time.